Welcome everyone to the presentation of the junior conferences by the Union High School Counseling Department. Traditionally, we did this in person where you made your appointment and you came to our offices and we were able to discuss everything that has to do with your student in their junior year. Well, we've made an adjustment and we decided as a group that we were going to bring you this important information in a presentation this way. But don't worry, you will still have your 45 minute appointment through a virtual session, which you will schedule individually with your counselors. I have everyone here with me today. Feel free to pause at any point in the presentation. You will also receive it in your email as a PDF. So we are able to click on any hyperlinks that we demonstrate today. Thank you to my wonderful counseling staff for being available, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. So where do we begin? As I said, you're first going to watch, prepare any questions as we go, and here is where you will make an appointment with your counselor for your 45-minute personalized meeting. Everyone has a time and when you click into their calendar, you are able to book that time. In addition, you will receive a confirmation email in which your counselor will send you some additional resources. Feel free to review all of that. And in order for your counselors to tailor the conference to your specific needs, we just ask that you fill out this brief questionnaire so that if you have anything in mind, for what you envision for your student and if your student already knows what they have ready to go post graduation they can prepare sufficiently for you by answering these questions speak freely be open and get ready for this exciting time hello everyone so here we are at this moment all in this together this has been a moment where parents have sometimes been excited about and sometimes dreaded. And our student bodies as juniors can't believe that senior year is just around the corner. But every word on this screen, in, it really it reflects everything that we are prepared to do, whether it's a listening ear or suggestions about solutions, or maybe just the connection that we're building today, we are all in this together. So here's our opportunity. As we begin this journey, uh, we're going to continue to develop our student, counselor, and family connection. This is a time when we can actually be on the same page to the brilliant future of your young adult and this upcoming um, senior year. The review of current performance and progress will be discussed during our junior parent conferences. We will not only review and uh, go over the past performances, but also the current progress of this junior year. We will, during our sessions, update the graduation status, your knowledge of what is needed to graduate. We will go over your GPA, your transcript will be in full review, and we will go over not only the academic requirements for graduation, but also the state testing requirements for graduation, according to the New Jersey Department of Education. During this session, you'll hear a number of possible planning options after high school. There are many different ways that you can enter the workforce or go into college, military, or even take a gap year to work and earn money doing, um, during this process. During this time, we're also going to develop a personalized plan for your young adult. Our, senior, our upcoming senior year will be met with uh, many challenges uh, to get you to a place where senior schedules will be done and the courses that you're thinking about can be linked to your interests as well as possible majors. 
So now it's about that time where we're gonna rally all of our resources, whether it's teachers, counselors, coaches, mentors, uh, whether we're going to enhance our knowledge of NCAA uh, information, mentoring possibilities, internships, as well as using Naviance to get everything that you need for the next level within our grasp. And community service is always going to be in front of us. So get ready for our junior parent conferences. It's going to be a great opportunity for us to be in this truly all together. Hi everyone, I'm Ingrid Soares and I'm going to give you a brief overview as far as uh, graduation courses and credit requirements are concerned. So students of the class of 2022 must have a total of 130 credits in order to meet their graduation requirements. Uh, this chart explains it. We are, I'm just gonna give you a brief overview. So you need the four years, which is equal to 20 credits of English. Now keep in mind that English is sequential. Therefore, to be scheduled for senior English during your senior year, you must have taken and passed your junior English course. If for some reason you do not pass your junior English course, you will be scheduled for the junior English course during your senior year, which will then mean that you will have to take your senior English course during summer school in order for you to receive your high school diploma. You need the four years, which is equal to 20 credits of phys ed and health, three years, uh, which is equal to 15 credits of math, which include algebra one and geometry, three years of history, which include US history one, US history two, and world history, three years of science, which include biology, uh, usually a chemistry or physics class, and an additional lab-based science class, one year of world language for a high school diploma, two or three years uh, if you are intending to go to a college, four-year college or university, uh, one year of a visual performing arts uh, elective, which is usually like a drawing, an art class, a music class, uh, one year of a career technical arts uh, elective, which is usually uh, something like woodworking, TV production, or a business class, and then half a year of your uh, financial literacy course. Now, again, as I stated initially, this is a brief overview. During your junior conferences, your counselor will go into more detail with you based on what you need individually and on your current transcript. Slide. In addition to the course and credit requirements needed for graduation, students will also need to demonstrate proficiency in a state assessment or a substitute assessment as described in this chart. Students will be able to show proficiency in English language arts and in math by either meeting the cut score on the park assessment or meeting the cut score on a substitute assessment or by meeting the criteria of the New Jersey Division of Education portfolio appeal process. The appeal process is an opportunity for students to show proficiency through portfolio work samples. So just a brief note on students with disabilities. A student with a disability whose individualized education plan determines that the student is exempt from these requirements, they would be required to achieve alternative proficiency as stated in their IEP. So for more detailed information about the cut scores and the assessments that can be taken to demonstrate proficiency in ELA and math, uh, you can visit the link above and uh, read all of the information as stated by the New Jersey Division of Education. Again, during your junior conference, your counselor will review with you in more detail where you stand in terms of meeting the uh, state testing requirements. Thank you. Hi guys, um, I'm Ms. Bose, and we're gonna go over a quick tutorial of how to navi navigate Naviance. So I'm gonna share my screen really quick and give you guys a tour. So we're gonna start off with how to find it, how to find the Naviance link. So you can start on the Union High School page and go to departments. From here, you'll find the counseling department. Under the counseling department page, you can slide on down to Naviance right on the side. And when you find it here, you're gonna click on Naviance Student. 
So all of our students already have logins to Naviance. It's not something that you have to create. Uh, you have one already. If you're not sure of your login or um, password, please contact your counselor directly and we can reset that for you. Um, parents, if you do not have an account, we can set that up for you individually. Um, you may not have account, an account yet and you can just contact your counselor directly. So as a student, you're gonna log in from here with your email and password and it'll bring you to the Naviance homepage. From here, um, we're gonna go over a, a quickly a few things that you'll need to know uh, for this year and next year to be prepared. Um, one thing that you'd like to, you should start with is um, if you're unsure what you wanna major in next year or maybe a career that you'd like to have after high school, a great tool would be to click um, on this careers here and the career inventory. So you can either do the career cluster finder or career interest profiler. And this will kind of uh, rate your interests um, and what you are good at, maybe what you're not good at, and then give you some um, ideas of what different um, majors you could do or jobs you could do uh, that would be within your interests. So this might be a great place to start. Um, I know when I was looking to figure out what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure. Um, I knew I liked psychology and I went all the way into my junior year of college not knowing what I wanted to do with that. If I had something like this, a great tool, I might have been able to figure this out quicker. Um, so this is a great place to start. Um, let's say your post-secondary plans do include going to college. Um, this Naviance is gonna be the um, holy grail for anything college. If you start on the college's homepage, okay, a great place to go if you're not sure where you wanna go um, or any of the different categories would be to start with Supermatch. So Supermatch is basically like online shopping, but for colleges. It narrows down your search based on cost, size, location, um, what majors are offered in each of these colleges. You can put in the search criteria up at the top and then it'll give you a bunch of institutions that um, are in that area. So it'll give you a fit score, meaning how well it, it fits into each of the criteria that you put in. And then it'll also tell you whether or not they think it's an academic match for you. So that's another thing you wanna think about moving forward. You can look at your GPA and, and in your junior conference, we'll go over your GPA um, and your SAT, SAT, ACT information um, and scores. And this will kind of let you know whether or not it's an academic match for you. So if you find some, some colleges that you like, um, so let's click on this, William Patterson University. What you wanna to start to do junior year is build a list of colleges that you're thinking about. From here, um, when this page loads, you can add this list, add this to your list of colleges you're thinking about just by clicking this little heart right here. So this heart will bring it to the list. And if you come up here, colleges, colleges I'm thinking about, it'll add it to this list over here. Um, from here, um, this will then turn into the list of colleges that you're applying to. So um, next year, by the, you, by the time you begin senior year, you wanna narrow down your list between five and 10 schools of colleges that you're applying to. So if we go to colleges, um, you can actually move this one. So let's say I'm thinking about applying to Rider next year when you're a senior, you can move to your application list. And while you're doing this, you can also request transcripts. So um, when you're applying to any of your, your colleges, you're going to need those transcripts. Um, and this is how you'll do it. So let's say I want to do um, early action admission, which would be November 15th. Um, I'm going to submit my application through Common App. Um, I haven't submitted my application yet, let's say. I'm going to add and request transcript. When you get to this uh, page, you want to hit initial transcript, and that's the transcript that we will send out to all of your colleges, the initial one, and then you'll hit request and finish. This will notify your counselor that you have requested a transcript for this school um, and notify us that you intend to apply here, and it'll give us the due date so that we know when to get your information in by. The other thing that you'll need um, is a letters of recommendation. So you can request those right on Naviance for your teachers. So if we go back to the top and we go to our college's homepage, we slide on down to letters of recommendation here. On this page, you'll be able to add a request, find a teacher, 
let's say Mrs. Ahern for now, um, and you want to click all future and current colleges. This way we can send, your counselors can send your letters of recommendation um, to any of the schools that you might apply to and uh, maybe apply to later on. And then you will submit your request right here. All of that can be done right on Naviance. Um, your counselor letter of recommendation will be a little bit different. That you'll have to fill out your counselor brag sheet. So I have an, um, a quick view of what mine looks like. Let's see. Um, oops, sorry about that. Here we go. So a quick overview, You're, you'll have to fill out a brag sheet for your, your counselor and then it'll be a different brag sheet for your teacher right over here. So let's go back. Um, on here on Naviance, you can track your applications and you can also search for scholarships. I know that everybody is very interested in, in scholarships. So if we go back to our college's homepage, just quickly, um, you'll see scholarship, scholarships and money right here. Um, you can view the scholarship list, which are scholarships that we post through Union High School. And then you can also view the national scholarship search where um, you can build your profile and find scholarships um, that everyone posts throughout the nation. And this is a really good tool to kind of narrow down that search so you're not looking through thousands and thousands of, of scholarships. Um, another great tool is that we use Naviance for important messages that we send out um, and important information. So if you go up on the top over here, you'll see your messages. Um, and I have 20 new messages that I have to look at. All right. Um, if you have any further questions with this, uh, your counselor can go over it with you in your junior conference. All right, Mrs. Ahern, back to you. Post-secondary options. This is on the screen, we have a two-year school, which is your basic associate's degree. It's your basic uh, two-year diploma. Your four-year school is your basic bachelor's degree for a, from a four-year university, like Montclair, Kane, Rutgers. Vocational technical business schools. So when we talk about that, this is for the student who is not going to a two-year or four-year school, but in return wants to get something like a certificate, like Lincoln Tech. DeVry is an excellent school. Catherine Gibbs offers at least 43 to 46 certificates uh, going through pre-law, law enforcement, um, paralegal studies. Union County College also has an adult program, the Union County Votech School. It's a 10 month in length, six hours a day, and Union County Votech offers automotive technology, cosmetology, electrical technology, HVAC and plumbing, which I think is an excellent program for those who do not want to go to college. Um, and you can also touch base with your counselor during your junior meeting for, those, for that information. We also have the military. Um, I suggest uh, getting on ASVAB.org where you can find about ASVAB testing, entrance exams, test prep, exam resources. And we're going to talk a little bit about the workforce. That's pretty self-explanatory. That's where you can complete career assessments and identify your top interest, find and apply to internships and apprenticeships, finish high school with a certificate. Um, also, a lot of other kids, a lot of other students want to go into the workforce, take a break from school. Maybe school was a little stressful for them. They want to take a break, maybe buy themselves a new car, figure out how they're going to pay for college or just work a little bit and find their niche and then go from there. And then last but not least, we have gap year. Gap year is typically when a student takes a year off to travel, do some research, save some money. Uh, basically also again, find yourself, find out what it is that makes you happy and return to one of those options. I hope this was helpful. Thank you. And we have a secondary resource within Mr. Demetrio's slide that was put together by the staff and it goes through life after high school and it includes more detail as to what Mr. Demetrio's talking points were. So if you have any other interest in that, that is a live link, but it comes up pink, so it's a little bit different. So we just wanted to make sure we shared that with you also. Are you next? Oh. 
Hold on one second. Sorry about that. Hi, everybody. It's Mrs. Bursler, and I just wanted to talk about uh, post-secondary considerations uh, that we'll talk about during your junior conference. Um, so our first uh, bullet point says future career match with available programs and majors. Not only are we going to talk about uh, what colleges, universities, trade school, military options, um, match up with what your child wants to do after high school. Um, we also will talk about some options we have for electives that your child can take during their senior year here at Union High School that will also match up with programs that they want to participate in after high school. We'll also discuss financial resources. You know, whatever your child's um, options are after high school, if it involves any type of higher education, obviously financial resources is an important speaking point. Um, we could talk about financial aid options. The FAFSA is a huge um, financial resource that we will talk about. Um, even if your child does not um, plan on attending a college or university, many trade schools, as well as our county colleges, they also accept the FAFSA. So that's an important piece for you to take care of during the fall of your child's senior year of high school. We will also speak about scholarship opportunities, and Ms. Bose had just uh, spoken briefly about that, helping you navigate through Naviance to talk about scholarship opportunities. Um, we have scholarships that are available here to our uh, students at Union High School, and we could show you once again how to navigate through Naviance, how to navigate through Naviance to um, see all those opportunities. Also, another big decision that you and your child have to discuss is living at home. Um, commuting versus living away and on campus on a college or university campus. Um, you know, that also kind of goes back uh, to what I was saying before about finances. You know, uh, and I'm going to kind of skip down to our last uh, bullet point of open and honest family communication. Whether your child is going to be living at home or living on a campus um, during their first year, that is a big discussion that you should be having a family conversation about prior to applying to whatever your future plans are, because that also impacts upon the cost of what is going to be uh, wherever your child decides to go. So that's a big decision that also has to be discussed as well. Once again, type of environment, size of school, program, the extracurriculars that the school, college, university has to offer. Once again, huge cost. Um, and then diversity. So, um, you know, there's also a wonderful app um, that I always recommend in addition to Naviance. It's called niche.com, N-I-C-H-E.com. And I like to recommend this to all of my students. It's just an additional resource. It's an app that you can download on your phone and it gives you the most up-to-date information regarding colleges, universities, trade schools. It talks about all of these speaking points that we're talking about now. And then also college visits and fairs. Um, many colleges and universities take demonstrated interest as part of the application process. So anytime that you're available, whether it be virtually or in person, to see a college, university, or uh, trade school's campus, I would definitely recommend um, taking that opportunity. Also here at Union High School, we do offer up to three excused absences for our students who are going to visit a college, university, uh, trade school campus. Okay, as long as you have the appropriate documentation from that institution that you were there for a tour, um, you give it to the attendance office and then your child's absence is excused for that day. Okay, and I already touched on the open and honest family communication. Um, I will close my portion with this. My first year here at Union High School, I had a wonderful student um, who applied to a school and um, I won't divulge any personal information, but um, there wasn't a open communication between him and his family prior to the application process. The student, um, received acceptance to the school, and it turned out he wasn't able to go uh, because financially it wasn't feasible for this particular family. He was heartbroken. The family, uh, his mom and dad were heartbroken because they obviously wanted their son to be happy. Um, but my point in giving you this story is, we can't impress upon you enough to have these open and honest uh, discussions with your family. This way, none of that heartache 
rejection, anything like that will be part of the process. You know what you're facing head on right when you uh, embark on the application process. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. I'm Mrs. DeGeorge, and not only am I one of the counselors, I am also the testing coordinator. So I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about PSATs. Due to the pandemic, um, the College Board offered another opportunity for students to take the PSATs, which this year will be January 26. So you should have already received the link, and I'll discuss that in a moment, about being able to register for it. Um, many of you probably did take it last year as a 10th grader, but the good news is 11th graders can take it again. And then there is no cost to any of the students. The um, township picks up the cost for that. Now, as an 11th grader, you can qualify for the National Merit Scholarship. And basically, that's according to the criteria set by them. We do not have information on that. It's all up to national merit. Now, if you are planning on taking the PSAT, we do ask you to RSVP soon. The deadline to RSVP is by December 18th, and the link was emailed to the student's account. So it is important that the student sign themselves up because if the student does not sign themselves up, they, they will not be able to do it as the parent. The student has to do it. Um, so there's resources that are available. So we're going to just show you those here a second. This is a great resource, CAP Test. They give a lot of, lot of pre, um, prep for the PSATs. And then after the PSATs, they'll have prep for the SAT. So that's a great, great resource that you can use for that. And then the other resource here is practice resources through the College Board. College Board has so much to offer, so you can click on that link and it'll bring you to free practice tests for the PSATs and then eventually the SAT. So please definitely check those links out. Now, we want to just talk a second about the difference between the SAT and the ACT. There are some differences. Um, both of them have optional essays, and the SAT is about three hours and 50 minutes, like I said, essay optional, and ACT is about two hours and 55 minutes, and that's also optional. Now, before I go on to the other things, one of the things that we recommend that the students do is take each one of these tests coming up in the spring, take an SAT, take an ACT, and then see which test you feel most comfortable with. I have four children of my own and three are in college, and each one of them did better or felt more comfortable with a different test. So it's all about what they feel comfortable with. And the only way they're going to know that is by taking the, each of the tests to see. Now, when you're looking at what's composed on the test, basically they both have reading, language, math, writing and language, and an optional essay. The difference is the ACT also has science. So if you are a science person, this might be a good test also for you because it gives you a little bit diff of different perspective. Um, optional essay, no science on the SAT, and then it's um, critical thinking skills on your science on the ACT. When we're looking at math, both tests have arithmetic, algebra one and two, geometry, both of them have trigonometry, um, formulas are provided for SAT, but there are no formulas provided for the ACT. Now, when you're looking at a calculator, there are some sections on the SAT that they do not allow you to use a calculator. On the ACT, you can use a calculator on all sections. Um, now, as far as, like we said, the essay is optional. That's an individual choice. I do think it's a good idea to take the essay each time. It's an additional 40 minutes that the student is sitting, but it is good to at least take that that once. 
There are no penalties for wrong answers on either one of the tests. So if you can narrow it down, we do say to try to guess if you can narrow it down to a couple choices. Now, when you look at, and at scoring, please realize the scoring is different. On the SAT, the scoring is between a 400 and a 1600. And the score on the ACT is between a one and a 36. We've provided the links on the bottom to go to the website for the College Board and the ACT. Now that is where you would register. We are not able to register your student for the test. They have to do that themselves. Um, they do need to create an account. Most of you as juniors should already have an account for the PS from taking the PSAT sophomore year, but if you did not, that's the first thing you need to do. And then lastly, when you look over to the right, where it says SAT versus the ACT, that is a YouTube presentation that myself and Ms. Bose had done back in one of our Lunch and Learns. So I would definitely recommend that you view that. And at any time, you can reach out to me um, or your counselor for any questions. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Mrs. Weisberg. Um, and I'm going to walk you through a suggested timeline for your junior year. The reason we say suggested is because, of course, there are things that may or may not apply to you, but we kind of just want to give you a framework so you have some idea of what these months should look like. Now, I know it says fall. It's still technically fall until December 21st, so you're still in time to be getting these things done. As we mentioned just a moment ago, um, typically in the fall, you would take the PSAT. This year, we're rolling with COVID and we're gonna take it in January. Um, again, this is something that could qualify you for National, Mer um, pardon me, National Merit Scholarship. Um, but the other benefit to taking this is that it does give you access to trying the test. You really wanna have a chance to see what it's going to look like. There are benefits to that. One, you'll get a sample score. And also, the College Board has partnered with Khan Academy so you will be able to get a personalized learning plan, which is great. It gives you time to really study and prepare for when you sit down for the SAT in the spring. Um, you also start wanting want to start looking at the NCAA eligibility. We're gonna talk more about that later, but if you are a student athlete, you do want to make sure you've met with your counselor, you've made that clear, and that your coursework does meet the requirements so that you would be eligible. Not just the coursework, but also the GPA and the test scores that are required. Um, and then what we really wanna do is start thinking about skills, interests, and abilities, right? What is it that you enjoy doing? And if you're not sure, that's okay too. We do have plenty of opportunities. That's a great chance again to get onto Naviance and do some of those career interest inventories. But to really start thinking about what is interesting to you? What is exciting to you? And how can we start to plan from there? In the winter, you are gonna have your junior conference. So after you've watched this video, you'll go on, you'll schedule an appointment with your counselor, and you are gonna really have a lot of time to sit and go through this in details. You wanna start making a list of colleges and make plans for visits. We are gonna give you a form. It's called a preliminary uh, college form, and that's gonna kinda help you break down. We're gonna get into that in more detail when we meet, but it will give you an idea of how to break down your list. Not just of colleges, but again, also thinking about if you're interested in the military, what are your next steps for that? If you're thinking about career, how can we start to prepare and how can we think about interview skills and getting prepared for those next steps? Um, remember to keep your grades up. There is a common misconception that only junior year counts. Every year matters. This is our last chance to do what we want to do there, right? And regardless of your plans, it is important to pass all of your classes, to earn your diploma, keep that GPA as high as possible because that's what makes you competitive, not only for college, but for academic programs, scholarships, and so forth. We're gonna move from the winter um into the spring so this is when we're going to start thinking about taking our college entrance exams again i also reiterate what mrs DeGeorge said which is that it is great to take each test at least once we recommend you take each test at least once before the end of your junior year that way you have a score and you can kind of uh plan ahead for the fall of your senior year you're gonna meet with your counselor to pick your courses we'll talk more about that later but you also wanna start thinking about who are you gonna ask for letters of recommendation, for college, for employment, for 
uh, technical programming. There are all these different reasons. So think about the people who know you and would have really good things to say about you. And do be mindful, it doesn't have to be a person who you got a, a, you know, an A in their class. It could be a class where maybe you struggled and you overcame a challenge. That's also very noteworthy. If you want to start att attending college and career fairs, we are still in this virtual world right now, but I assure you there's no shortage of resources we are constantly sharing and posting. And if you come across anything, please let us know so we can share it as well. And then really start to do research on majors or careers or things that are interesting to you. We really are very knowledgeable as a department and we really coordinate with one another. So if there is something that you're interested in, I can guarantee you that one of us will be able to get you more information and help you there. Summer. Might be for break, but it's also time to work, right? This is a really important time for you. Typically in the summer, right before we end school for the year, we will send you something to work on over the summer to kind of keep your ducks in a row, right? So you wanna start working on your senior checklist. What are things you need to work on? Have you started looking at colleges? Have you started looking at opportunities for next year? You wanna start looking at the process. You wanna start knowing what is it that you need to know? your applications when they open up and how you can get started with that. We will again touch on that more later, but you definitely want to be organized. Whatever your best mode is, whether you're a digital person, I'm a paper and pencil kind of person myself, keep yourself organized and stick to this timeline. And remember to make an appointment with us anytime you might have a question. Thank you. So in the spring, you'll be making your senior schedule and this is a great time to take courses that are related to what you're interested in. So what you plan on majoring in or what field you plan on going into after high school. So you wanna continue taking classes that challenge you. Um, colleges, military, trade and vocational schools, they all require your transcript. Uh, if you plan on going to work, they will also ask you for your transcript. So you wanna be taking um, senior year classes that match up with what you plan on going into. For college, you want to be taking a rigorous uh, class schedule showing that you are getting ready for college. So taking AP and honors classes, if you're interested in taking those. And then for work, you know, taking your senior classes, a lot of times that is a point of conversation when you interview if you plan on going to work after high school. So you want to be taking classes that you're interested in and excited about and that you can talk about uh, with whoever, you know, you if you plan on going for employment, uh, college interview, um, military and trade school also. And then we also have a list of courses that are connected to career fields. So this is a slide deck of the different courses um, that fall under specific fields. For example, with architecture and engineering, there's a short description. And then the courses we offer at Union High School that are in line with that field. And there's 10 different um, career areas. So there's also business, computer technology, and so forth. So what we recommend is always talking to your school counselor about what courses that you're interested in, what fields that you might be uh, going into. And if you're undecided, that's okay. You know, you can still just um, explore the different courses that you, uh, that pique your interest. And I always recommend also to students that if um, they can't think of an additional course that they want to take, go for a skill building course like public speaking. Um, so something like that, you know, you can always add into to your schedule if you're unsure. So just remember to always speak with your school counselor. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Mays and what I wanna do now is talk to you about NCAA eligibility. Um, one of the things that um, parents and, and student athletes, one of the things that we wanna make sure that you do is you talk to your coaches to see if you can actually play at the next level, either division one or division two. Um, at this time too, you wanna to make sure that you connect with your counselor because at that time we wanna be able to go and do a thorough review of your transcript to make sure that you have uh, met all of the requirements for the certification. By that I mean student athletes have to have at least a 2.3 GPA and an SAT score of at least 1,000. Also, one of the things that we do, uh, the counselors do, is we complete a NCAA worksheet with our students to make sure that you have enough points um, in order to be certified with the, with the eligibility center. There is a registration fee of $100. Um, right now with the COVID is being waived, but 
you must register at the eligibility center. It costs about $100, and it takes about 40 minutes to go through the process of actually completing uh, the questionnaire. The next thing I want to talk about is community service. And one of the things that I want you to be mindful is, is that all students of Union High School have to fulfill 20 hours of community service. Sometimes the community service is offered at the school. Uh, by that I mean, you know, we have the ROTC, they're very active, or uh, the, the PAC, um, uh, the performing art kids sometimes have, you know, get community service. But sometimes our school will offer it, but typically, a student can complete the um, community service with food banks or through a religious institution or by volunteering at a hospital. So one of the things you want to do is make sure that you complete that, you know, uh, during your junior year. And also um, the community service um, hours um, or events can be found in the Delhi Bulletin or the Community Service uh, Bulletin Board outside of the Counseling Department. The next thing I want to talk to you about is scholarships and information. Um, it's very, very important that you um, go to this website for the FAFSA. It's the studentaid.gov. It's a free application for student for federal student aid. Um, one of the things that I will say, uh, you know, I have a, my kids went to school, went to college, and I can say that it's very important that you do complete that because you want to make sure that your student, your son or daughter qualifies for financial aid. I didn't do that for one of my kids, and I suffered a lot because I didn't follow what, what I should have done. So you want to make sure that you do that. The other thing is I want to talk to you about is uh, scholarships, okay? Uh, scholarships is free money that is given to assist you to further your education. So essentially you want to make sure that you understand that there are two different types of scholarships. Um, one type of scholarship is a merit scholarship, which is a merit basis based upon academics, athletics, or, or artistic. And then there's grants. Grants are um, is the type of money that's typically given from um, the state or the government, uh, and it's, it's based upon a need. And I know that um, Ms. Whit Villas did a um, presentation for that, which is found on our website. The next thing I want to talk about is our College Corner. And the College Corner is essentially found on the Counseling Department's internet site. Basically, it is a roadmap to help uh, our students to navigate uh, not just their time at Union High School, but also they're uh, making the transition uh, to college. So there's a presentation on there for the timeline, which speaks to what you need to do each year. And then there's also a, um, a, a, a link that leads you to the high school prep guide, which speaks to, like, say, for example, if you wanted to go into a specific career such as law or uh, engineering, it talks to what courses you need to take for that. Uh, speaking of courses, we do have the UHS course catalog, which is found on our district website. And one of the things that's found in that particular um, area is uh, information about our AP and um, honors programs. And also every course that we have here at Union High School is listed in the uh, course catalog. So if you have a question about what you should be taking, um, you could find the answer right there in the course catalog. And then the last thing is our elective course uh, selection sheet. And basically what this does is provides valuable information as to what type of electives you need to take going forward. Uh, this is your junior year. So one of the things we want you to do is think about you know, your next level, what you wanna take in college. So say for example, if you wanna go into law, you know, one of the courses you might wanna take it, you know, is the intro, you know, intro to law class, or if you're taking an engineering class, an elective that you might wanna take is either the CAD course or the in intro to engineering. So one of the things we want you to do is make sure that you pay attention to the election, to the election course sheet and uh, understand that, you know, we have a new one that's soon to come out. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Miss Rivera, and I am here to talk about terms to start getting familiar with. Um, even as junior students and parents, it is really important to understand um, the terminology that is used when uh, students are applying for four-year colleges. Um, and I just want to go over all of these terms and just um, give you the definition and examples that way you already understand um, uh, what you're looking into. 
So when students are applying to a four-year college, there's different types of applications. Uh, the first one is early decision. So what that means is uh, students apply early, so around November, uh, October, November, and then they get a decision around um, December, January. The most important information about early decision is that this is a binding contract. So what that means that if a student is applying early decision, they have to attend that school no matter what, no matter um, even the financial circumstances. Um, so it is really important to understand that early decision is binding. So that's not really something that we recommend unless this is 100% the school that the student wants to go to and the student has already had that conversation with their parents. Since it, since it is a binding contract, students would have to sign a contract with their parents and a counselor would also have to sign the contract as well. So it is really important to understand what early decision is. Now there's early action. So early action is non-binding, but you do apply early. So you do apply around October, November, sometimes even December, um, and then you hear back from colleges and then the student would have to decide what college um, they would have to attend to by May 1st. Um, so early action is not binding. So that means that you can apply to as many colleges as you want early action. Now going back to early decision, if you do a binding application, if you do early decision, you can only do that to one college. So early action, you can apply to as many colleges as you want and you, get, you apply early and you get a decision early. Now, if a student is not really into applying early, too much pressure applying very early on senior year, that's totally understandable. Um, there is an application just called regular decision. So what that is that those deadlines is around November, um, sometimes even late till May, but we wouldn't want students to wait that long. So you wanna just apply between November, December, January, um, depending on the school's deadline. Um, and then you'll, students will get a decision back um, before the school year is over. So it is important to know what regular decision is. Then we have, then colleges have rolling admission. So what that is, is once a student has applied and they have submitted all of their documents, that includes, you know, their applications, counselors have sent over um, their transcript and letters of recommendation, uh, the student will get um, notice from the colleges if they got accepted or not four to six weeks after. So those are the most important um, terminology that you should know regarding college applications um, because even now we have seniors like still wondering like should I do early decision or I'm applying early decision but they really mean early action so it's really important to start getting familiar with that even now as juniors. There's also other terms um, to, to start getting to, to know. So we already discussed Naviance, which is a career and college website, amazing resource where you can get a lot of information regarding um, careers. Um, and that's how students are going to be able to apply for colleges as well. So what that means is you have to make sure as a student that you are adding all of the colleges that you're applying to on your Naviance account because that is the only way that we're gonna be able to send out your high school transcript, the school profile, all the things that you need in order to apply for colleges, letters of recommendation, et cetera. So that is really important to understand what Naviance is. Then there's the common application. The common application is one central application where you uh, fill that out and then you send it out to all the colleges that accept the common app. Now, not every single college accepts the common app, such as Rutgers, they do their own application, but there are over 700 schools that accept the Common App. You fill out one and then you just send it out to all the colleges that you're applying to. Whatever is on the Common App would have to match Naviance. Students have to link it and so on, but that's more information that we'll give you guys later on. But it's really important to get to know what a Common Application is, what Naviance is, and how a counselor would have to um, send out your uh, documents, which is done through Naviance. Then there's the FERPA form. So even now, seniors are like, what's a FERPA form? So this is why we're telling you guys now. The FERPA form is uh, what you're gonna be filling out in every single college application. And what that is, is that it is um, documents stating that you're gonna be uh, waiving your rights to view your recommendation letter. And you're always going to check off yes. The reason for that is because colleges want to be sure that uh, counselors and teachers are being honest when we're doing your recommendation letter. 
So they feel that if you're waiving your rights to view your recommendation letter, you can't see it, we're being honest. Obviously, we're gonna be writing great things about our students, um, but you wanna make sure that you waive your rights to you view your recommendation letter. You're gonna fill out your FERPA form. You're gonna do that either through the Common App or an individual application, but it's really important to know that this is something that you have to do. Um, so these are all basic terms that you should start getting to know now. Um, and then we'll discuss more once we meet during our individual conferences. Thank you. So now that you have heard from all of the counseling staff, and I know it was an overwhelming amount of information, um, I'm sure you had to pause the video more than once, but please know they are all here for you and they are going into detail about your individual child once you have your meeting. So don't forget to make your appointment because you will be receiving a follow-up email with all of the links. So you're going to book your appointment with your individual counselor. Um, you are going to check with your child as to what times work for them so that they can also be present. You could be on the same computer at the same time. You can be on two devices if you're going into the office. Um, if something virtual um, with video capacity doesn't work, we could always schedule something by phone. Um, ideally, we would like to see your faces um, in whatever capacity that is, but check with your child as to their schedule before you book the appointment with your counselor. Um, and they are very flexible too. So if they have in their schedule, let's say um, 10.30 to 11.15, 15 and you can't make it till 1045 just give them a just um, give them a little note and maybe you could work that out confirmation of the appointment will be sent via email look for it um, you don't have to have gmail to receive a calendar invite so please accept that because you will also be sent reminders through that link um, and again when you register for your appointment make sure that you have an accurate email address um, the details in the link will log on, um, to log on. You will receive that. You should be looking for it. If something happens, please check your spam. Uh, and again, please fill out the pre-conference form so that we have all the available resources for you when we enter into that meeting. Again, on behalf of my counseling department, I appreciate your time. We will get through this together and junior year is super exciting to begin planning for what's to come. Thank you again. Stay safe. Talk to you soon.